Hi everyone, a big welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am really excited for this video. Today we're going to be chatting about five literary fiction recommendations backlist edition. Not advanced copies of shiny new releases that I've been sent nothing that was written in the past 20 years. These books were all published in the noughties or earlier and they are all so good. When I came across each of them I was overjoyed because they are all stunners and I really want more people to read them. Please please chat to me down below about literary fiction that came out in the 90s, 80s, 70s or earlier that you want more people to read. Let's give them the attention they deserve. First up we have Rattlebone by Maxine Clare, first published in 1994. This was republished by Daunt Books Publishing last year. Set in 1950s at Kansas, it explores the lives of the residents of a small black town, primarily through the eyes of young Irene Wilson as she goes through her coming of age. This has every element of a modern American classic. It is exactly what you would expect it to be, exploring themes of community and passion and love and joy. Maxine Clare captures this town and these characters and just so many painful and joyful aspects of life so expertly. The characters, their interactions and reactions and dialogue could not feel more authentic and real. The writing throughout is understated and luminous. The chapters feel kind of snapshotty, each linked and flowing from one to the other, but all focusing on a slightly different theme or tribulation, from adultery to death to religion to heartbreak. You will be there with Irene in here every step of the way. You will laugh with her, you will ache with her. This feels like one of those books that you could reread over and over again in your lifetime. It's honestly a triumph. I've not stopped thinking about it since I read it last year. I cannot believe more people aren't reading it. Next up we have An Equal Music by Vikram Seth published in 1999. Set across Vienna and London, this one tells the story of Michael, a violinist in a string quartet. When Julia, his first love, whom he has never stopped loving, turns back up in his life. I don't think I've discussed this book on my channel since like 2018 when I first started my channel and read this for the first time. It is time to bring it back. Vikram Seth is more well known for his longer novel A Suitable Boy but this is honestly such a stunner. It's a book about music and the relationship a person can have with their music as they create it. I have never read a book that so beautifully and so accurately speaks to the power of music and art generally, the universality and the individuality of it. This is also a book about love and obsession and life spent trying to recapture an image of perfection. The setup of the novel is nothing new but that doesn't matter. These characters are so authentic so flawed. One of those books where if you were told that Michael and Julia were real people, you would believe them. If you enjoy character-focused literary novels that explore music or art generally, you will appreciate this. Hugely emotional and moving. It's sublime. Third up today we have A Helping Hand by Celia Dale, first published in 1966. This is actually another recent re-release from Daunt Books. The quality of their reissued titles is so good. Set in a seemingly ordinary 1960s suburban home, this one tells the story of Josh and Maisie who love to lend a hand to elderly people. Though behind the respectability and the politeness and the cups of tea, something more sinister lurks. Celia Dale's writing is totally delicious. It is at once very quiet and mundane and almost dry, 
while delivering these shocking punches and wicked humour. If you read this book with no prior knowledge or expectations whatsoever, you would have no idea where it was leading you. The characters in here are so bang on. She does not shy away from the dark sides of human nature, the greedy, the self-obsessed, the sinister. Some author who I can't remember right now actually reviewed this as being the accuracy, understanding and quiet wit of Jane Austen plus murder. Come on. If you love quiet crime books or books that feel a bit weird or quirky, you will love this. Such a unique and clever writer. I am so glad that she is coming back into the spotlight. I urge more people to pick up her work. Next up, we have Breathing Lessons by Anna Tyler, first published in 1988. Set over a single day, this follows mid-50s married couple Maggie and Ira as they drive 90 miles away from their home to a friend's funeral. An unexpected detour along the way brings them to their ex-daughter-in-law and granddaughter's house, with meddlesome Maggie secretly wanting them to move back in with her son. I'm sure everyone is already aware of Anne Tyler. She has a massive backlist of stunning literary novels, frankly any of which could have been on this list. She just does family dramas, and marriage portraits, and illustrations of mundane life, highlighting the small moments, and ultimately how they're kind of the big moments, like no one else. This is endearing, and surprising, and relatable, packed with twists and turns, jumping around in time, featuring a really eccentric cast of characters, this just feels so textured and rich. Every single scene and insight is a delight. Anne Tyler is just the best kind of reliable author. If you haven't explored her backlist yet, what are you waiting for? And finally, today we have Gilead by Marilyn Robinson, first published in 2004. We're ending on a biggie. There is no world in which I can say that this book is underrated, it won the Pulitzer, but it is backlist and it is totally brilliant. Set in a small town in Iowa in the 1950s, this is told through one long letter from an old reverend to his young son as he nears the end of his life. It is about family, community, grief, religion, aging, and the sheer wonder of life. This book just shines. It is glorious. The second person narration is really powerful. The relationship between the protagonist and his son is so well realised and affecting. You can feel the intimacy and the longing and the pain throughout, as well as moments that are so stark and devastating in here. There are some of the most heartwarming moments as well. As in Rattlebone, the small town life really lives on the page in here. The effect is quiet and understated, yet towering. The prose is always sublime, actually featuring one of the most beautiful openings in literature, I think, ever. A classic for a reason. If you haven't gotten around to reading this one yet, you really, really should. So there we have it, guys. Five backlist literary fiction books that I totally love and really want you all to read, please. I love chatting about and discovering brilliant books from the past 50 years that aren't the hot new releases that everyone's talking about. So please, please do give me your best recommendations down below. Anything that you love that's a hidden gem that I probably haven't heard of, I would love to add to my list. Thank you all so much for watching this video, guys. I really, really enjoyed this one. I hope you all did too. I hope you got some recommendations. I can't wait to chat to you all down below in the comments. Thank you again for watching. I hope you're all doing really well, and I will hopefully see you very soon in a new video. Bye.